Okay, so in this video, I'm basically going to go through um, how to do 12 markers for IB Geography and like go through some of my um, old essays that did like pretty decently. So I'm going to go through different examples and just go through what I did and things that you should remember to include and how to structure it and things like that. So this is a 12 marker that I did about transboundary pollution and this got 12 out of 12 um, and okay so I'm just going to run through what I did. So before writing the essay obviously you kind of learn about the topic and revise it um, from your notes. So I had all my notes and um, in the notes usually you'll have like your case studies for the topic because usually a 12 marker will need reference to some sort of case study and examples so make sure your notes are very clear and detailed with like facts like dates and examples places um to kind of give whoops to give um like extra points and detail for your paragraphs okay so the question here was analyze the consequences of one specific transboundary pollution event. So um, I chose to do the Southeast Asian haze. And so basically, I'll go over the first paragraph. So in the first paragraph, basically, I always make sure to define the key term. So the key term here was just transboundary pollution. So I um, defined that and then I kind of gave some details. Um, and then I went into the one that I was going to discuss um, and explained a bit about that and where it happened and what caused it because make sure that um, the causes okay so obviously when you learn about something your the causes and consequences are both really important but this essay focuses on focuses on the consequences so I just kind of give a brief um, sentence about the causes of it but that was not like concerned in the rest of the essay but it was just good background to have and the consequences I saved that for the rest of the essay so yeah so I'm giving background here about the event and then um I go on to say what I'm going to discuss in the essay so it's good to kind of have a sentence like this that like says what your the rest of the essay is and maybe like split it up into different sections um, and it really depends on the question, but here, because it was consequences, I could quite easily split that up into social, economic, environmental, and political. Um, and that just makes it kind of easier for you, because when you're planning each paragraph, you just like group everything together, and everything like flows nicely. Um, and also you're kind of getting to have a broader discussion, because you are you know that you're addressing all of these different areas. Um, but some cases in some essays this might not be um, appropriate to the question okay so then I move on to each paragraph so this is the social impacts and when I do a paragraph usually the first sentence will just be like what I'm going to talk about so I'm saying that the majority of social impacts of the Southeast Asian Haze event of 2015 are those concerning health implications and then I give examples of um, like to support this so what are the health complications so respiratory illnesses and i'm giving examples of what happened and how many cases there were um and and then i also oh yeah so I, so that's all kind of health um based and then i also want to speak about education um and this is all about education because that's also kind of social um i didn't really specifically say there's also education issues but that could be good to kind of just have a sentence right here saying I'm going to talk about education um but I mean this is okay because I'm saying also so it's like an additional point it's not just randomly mentioning things about the loss of school days um and then to summarize I just um kind of make a sentence that summarizes that there are social consequences um, and making sure as well that because it is a 12 marker, you don't need to be evaluating or making um, 
like comparisons really you're just kind of giving um an outline and a bit of detail about what rather than what and why and how but not really you're not really evaluating or comparing anything um so i can literally just summarize that paragraph easily without having to make any type of judgment really um and then yeah and then i move on to the economic consequences so kind of the same thing um i say regarding the economic consequences so i'm saying this is all about economic and then i'm going into all the different evidence that i have and the impacts of um what's happening the impacts of the southeast asian haze um and you know just giving like some detail into that and also another thing is when you're in an exam um condition in exam conditions it's kind of difficult to really like plan your essay perfectly because you are like in time conditions and everything so one thing to get i kind of got into the habit of was just making sure like to always state what you're going to talk about and then in each one try to like make the first sentence quite clear um just to make sure that you it sounds like still it's still it still, well, <laughs> it still sounds quite structured um in each paragraph um, and that's something easy to just put in there like in the first sentence just so you have that like key like first opening sentence for each thing okay then i have another paragraph about environmental consequences um again examples and everything um yeah and then finally it's also good to use words like finally or moreover next like just connective or what are they called connectives yeah connectives or like opener words to like um give it more structure because here when i say finally it's like then the reader knows this is the last point um and then it will be the conclusion so i go over the political consequences and more examples are here um and then i summarize that by saying it's causing political consequences so it's not a very like evaluative essay obviously you're just kind of saying what you know and you're saying you're always linking to the question like that's the key thing just making sure all your evidence is just proving your point to the question so after you've done all that and you've done your main paragraphs then you go on to the conclusion and the conclusion really only needs to be a few sentences um so here i just say overall it can be realized that transboundary pollution event of 2015 in southeast asia evoked a plethora of social economic environmental and political consequences to different degrees and scales across various regions throughout the region so just saying like um because the question is analyze the consequences so i'm saying that there are lots of different types of consequences and they're all kind of working at different degrees and scales obviously because in diff uh, this is southeast asia so it's concerning a lot of countries so not everywhere is going to be impacted to the same degree and um they have different methods to deal with it so yeah and then i said nevertheless all countries were impacted in some manner thus all countries would need to be involved in the decision making process to manage this detrimental and multifaceted event so basically just stating like what you've shown from your discussion so from my discussion i said the social economic um environmental political so i'm saying that there's like a lot of different factors and it, it's happening in a lot of different places around southeast asia so they're all different but nevertheless they all need to be involved in the um kind of management schemes um yeah okay okay this is another one i did um that was 12 out of 12 so again i'm just i'm not going to really go through in much as much detail as i did in the last one but this one's about using examples analyze the role of civil society in challenging restricted freedoms in at least two different places around the world so again using your notes and your case studies make sure you have two solid examples that you're going to discuss then go into it so first paragraph you're defining um so i did civil society restricted freedoms um and then i kind of gave a bit of a um introduction and then i said again i said this essay will do this so making sure i always have that like 
um, kind of some uh, that like kind of introductory sentence to just say what I'm actually going to do so that the reader is aware and they just are kind of already prepared for what's to come. Okay, rather than like me just jumping straight into it. So it's good to have a bit of a build up before you jump into your evidence. Okay, so then I'm going into each of my examples. So here I did Hong Kong um, Umbrella Revolution and then here I did the um, Malala Fund. So I'm basically answering the question by just outlining what happened in both places because it just is saying analyze the role of civil society so i'm basically outlining what happened but and i'm always making sure to link that to the idea of civil society because if i just said what happened that wouldn't necessarily answer the question so i'm going through the history kind of background just to give an idea but not too much detail just like simple easy to understand history of the protests um and then I'm going into civil society and how civil society in this case were frustrated um, because of the kind of lack of demo democratic ideals. And then I'm saying, what did civil society do to deal with this? So protests, what were the results of this? Um, and yeah, just linking it to civil society. And then that kind of ends by saying, a nice conclusion sentence thus hong kong provides a significant example of civil society challenging their restricted freedoms as it has evidently led to a larger global movement compared to the initial national movement it was so basically answering the question fully and then i'm moving on to um the malala fund and i'm doing the same thing so a bit of background and then i'm saying things about civil society i'm talking about social media and the international community and what happened what did people do and what organizations were created and involved what this did what were the results of that and then i again end it by saying that it's a, a good example of this um idea of challenging restricted freedoms that has gained global attention and then i do my conclusion again only two sent this is only one sentence so only one or two sentences really so I'm saying overall, the two examples analyzed indicate that civil society is characterized by extreme importance in challenging the restrictions imposed upon civil freedoms in different parts of the world, as movements often, as movement often grows expansively through these groups, particularly with the mechanism of social media to encourage and accommodate the spread of ideas and opinions. So I'm giving kind of a broad reference to the question, like I'm bringing it out into a broader context, like. Um, by what we've discussed from these two examples um, technology and social media was quite important to like gain um, traction so I kind of I, I mentioned that in relation to the question and in a wider context like a global context essentially okay this is the final one about affirmative action and closing the development gap so again defining 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 giving a bit of background to the ideas um, and then I'm saying, what am I going to discuss? Again, I'm outlining it in the introduction. And then I'm going into this discussion of each one. Um, so again, before it would be social, environmental, economic, for example. But this case, it's I'm dividing it by the actual case studies. Um, because it says using examples, so sometimes that's easier to do it this way instead. As that's like more fitted to the question. So I do a bit of introduction, give a lot of the evidence, link it to the question, link it back to affirmative action and the development gap and what methods are they doing. Then I'm concluding it. I'm conclu I'm concluding it with linking to the question again, doing it again, another example, and then I do a nice summary. Then I open again with what is this example and giving a lot of evidence and background and making sure you're not just stating a bunch of evidence but you're actually always linking it back to the question then I'm doing a conclusion linking and using the keywords in the question then my conclusion is just a few sentences summarizing it and I did do a bit of evaluation here that wasn't necessary really but again I'm just making it um, relevant to a wider global context and giving like a quite broad statement on um, the answer to the question that I've gained from this discussion. So make sure it always links to what you've just discussed.